Hi there, I'm Paul Stacy, Associate Director of Global Learning for Creative Commons, making this video for the Open Med Project from my home in Vancouver, Canada. Super nice to meet you all. I've been asked to say a few words about how I got started in open education, and for me that goes back to 2003 when I began using Creative Commons as part of a new startup initiative here in British Columbia that was incentivizing colleges and universities to collaborate and share four credit online learning courses that they would be funded to create. And uh, over the course of nine years, when I ran that program, I, I became a big believer in the value of open education and the, the success that that can generate in terms of innovating education. And But four years ago, I joined Creative Commons, where I've been now helping small and large open education initiatives around the world, including some in the MENA region. I've also been asked to say a few words about an open education initiative that I find interesting, and I, I thought I'd share one that I'm personally leading right now. As the growth of open education has been happening around the world, and we see more and more open education practices and resources being shared using Creative Commons, it's become imperative that Creative Commons itself put in place some tools and some training or education that helps practitioners, such as government or educators or librarians, fully uh, get, get the skills and understanding they need to make effective use of Creative Commons for open education. So I'm uh, working on a Creative Commons certificate program right now that will create certificates for government educators and librarians. And I'm trying to design that certificate and create that certificate using the best practices of open education. So some of the things we're trying to do are developing the certificate completely in the open, where anyone who has expertise can contribute that expertise to the design and creation of the certificates themselves. We're trying to design the certificates so that they're open enrollment. Anyone can participate. Uh, we're trying to make use of as much open education resource material as possible rather than authoring our own content from scratch. So reusing and remixing is a big part of the design and development process. And finally, perhaps the most interesting part is around the open pedagogy or teaching and learning part of the certificate, where we're trying to come up with activities, learning activities and assessments that engage participants in open education practices where they create as part of the learning activity or assessment resources that are open and become part of the certificate itself or contribute to some other open initiative that is generating a public good. All of which is really fun and I'm hoping to roll that program out over the next year or so, not just here in North America but around the world. I've also been asked to say a few words about what recommendations I might have for higher education decision makers and faculty in the Mediterranean or MENA region. And I thought I'd draw upon some of the insights I had when I last worked in the MENA region. So let me share a few suggestions. Um, the first one I'd have, and perhaps the biggest one from my point of view, is to establish a strategic purpose around the open education effort itself. It's really important of course, to have like startup grassroots things happening at a small scale. But if you want to have impact and generate scale, I think you really need to think clearly about this strategic purpose. So what is the social goal or the economic goal or the innovation goal that the Open Education Initiative is trying to achieve? And getting really clear about that um, up front as the reason why you're pursuing it. And then once that's clear, kind of looking at what are the enablers of that? Do we have to put in place some incentives for funding, let's say, to get some innovation happening, to get people engaged? Uh, do we have to look at um, perhaps some existing research that we could draw on that will help ensure our, our open education initiative has a good chance to succeed? Or even perhaps reviewing and looking at existing policy at the institution, uh, national or even regional level, and do some changes around open uh, around policy to create open policy need to happen to ensure the open education initiative can succeed. That's kind of at the big picture level. A few things at the kind of institutional level. I think open education has its biggest potential when it involves a consortia of institutions collaborating together rather than something happening within just one institution. So when I think of the MENA or Mediterranean region, I'd be asking, 
to what extent can we form a consortia of institutions across this region who all agree to collaborate and work on this open education initiative together, sharing resources, sharing practices, and not only sharing them, but using them collectively within their own specific environment. The extent to which that can be achieved could be really powerful. I also have a belief in reusing and adapting, translating, customizing, making use of existing materials as much as possible ought to be a, the very first strategy rather than uh, creating new materials from scratch. I think there's a need to look at uh, kind of curation and quality review of the materials that might get used to ensure that everyone agrees they're of high quality, they're effective, and can uh, be used effectively within the local environment in which they'll be uh, deployed. And then finally, I'd say that there's kind of a, a technology piece to this around uh, how will you enable the communities of practice to speak to it together? Because of course, face-to-face -face is great, but some virtual work will inevitably have to be done. How will the resources be shared, stored, distributed, uh, downloaded, reused, remixed, and uploaded if there's improvements made. That's a piece of technology that I think is, is a piece that needs to be considered. And then finally, um, what is the rubric for, for quality, um, looking at quality and looking at effectiveness, and how might the consortia agree on a set of standards associated with these open, open resources that include not just the heads of education and faculty, but also the students themselves, getting students directly involved in open education as not just recipients, but participants is a key part, I think, to the future of open education. There's a few suggestions for me. Super great to talk to you. If I can help in any way, please get a hold of me at Creative Commons. Thanks. Bye for now.